meeting in order. 704, please rise for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll, please. Trustee Papoli? Here. Trustee Nyson? Here. Trustee Agricol? Here. Trustee Taylor? Trustee Primer? Here. Trustee Hazia? Here. President Dilbert? Here. Attorney Addis? Here. Treasurer Zap? Here. Perfect. Approval of agenda. For um, unfinished business. Item C, website refresh. I'd like to change that to myself. Uh, and it looks like it got cut off, but that would be a um, discussion slash action item. Website refresh under unfinished business. Just changing the name? Yeah, just changing it to me. And uh, I think originally when it was sent out, it was just discussion, so I'd like to do discussion action. Like to request something under your business? Yes. In your business, I'd like a uh, co enforcement officer discussion action. I requested about a week ago, but I think it got lost in the mix. And under uh, my items, uh, and I'll just throw it after a K, uh, I have a an employee resignation that I would like for the board to hear. <clears throat> Any other? Approve the amended agenda as presented. Support. The property moved and supported. That we accept the agenda as amended. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public comment on agenda. Approval of minutes, uh, September 11th. Uh, I had a correction to the minutes. On the motion to sell the property, uh, it was a yes vote, and I believe Trustee Procoli was a no vote. Yeah. Okay. Any others? Accept the minutes as amended. Support. The move and support it that we accept the minutes of September 11th as amended. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. The special meeting of September 24th. I move that we accept the minutes for the special meeting on September 24th as presented. Support. The mood has supported, and we accept the minutes of September 24th as presented. Any question on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda. Motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. The mood has supported, and we accept the consent agenda as presented. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Madison? Yes. Trustee B? Yes. Trustee Bacoli? Yes. Trustee Chilins and Trustee Hazier? Yes. Trustee Primer? Yes. President Gilbert? Yes. My items. Um, we have sent out a revised order of the 
the agenda. And I assume everyone got that. You know, the items were the same, just they're put in a different order. First up, uh, the audit update and the approval of draft from Michael Roper of Yo and Yo. Good evening. Uh, in front of you, you should have three separate documents. One is the governance letter to council. Uh, the other is the financial statement itself. And the other is a presentation slide that I'd like to just go through um, that summarizes the financial statements. Um, I, I do suggest if, if you don't go through the financial statements thoroughly, you at least go through the section called management's discussion and analysis because it's a good summary of the overall financial statements. Uh, first up, uh, the audit opinion can only be issued by a licensed CPA firm and it provides the highest level of assurance uh, that is offered for a test services. Management's responsibility is to prepare financial statements and maintain a level of internal controls that can detect or prevent fraud in a timely manner. The auditor's responsibility is to use uh, risk-based judgments in order to apply auditing procedures on those financial statements in order to support the balances presented. Uh, so our opinion is an unmodified opinion, which is the best opinion you can get, and really that's the bottom line of an audit, what you're hoping to get out of an audit. So it states that your financial statements are materially stated uh, correctly. On page three, there's a, a chart of the general fund revenues for the most recent year, uh, ending March 31, 2018. And if you look at this, you'll, you'll see that taxes make up the majority of your revenues, which I don't think would be a surprise to anybody. And the rest, uh, the next largest is your state revenue sharing. Uh, kind of newer as a larger chunk of income this year would be the rental income, and that's primarily uh, renting of equipment to other funds. Page four breaks down the expenditures. Uh, there's three main pieces to the expenditures here, which is public safety, which is just over a third of your expenses, uh, general government, which is also just over a third. And then this year there was a large transfer to the sewer fund to help with the deficit. So that, that typically wouldn't be there and it kind of skewed some of the percentages if you're comparing year over year, um, but it, it's there this year. On page five, uh, we show um, trend data for your general funds revenues and expenditures going back to 2014. Um, keep in mind, in 2014, the highway fund was, was rolled into the general fund, so that, that does uh, skew it a little bit in 14, but going forward, it's just general fund. Um, and you'll see, if you look at 2018 revenues and expenses, look, you know, look like the revenues aren't coming in to quite match expenses, but you have to remember there's that over $300,000 transfer to the sewer fund. So otherwise it, it, it is matching pretty well. Page six is the water operations. And you will see that the trend has been that revenues have exceeded expenses uh, for most of the past uh, few years. However, in 18, they were almost uh, almost identical. Um, so I think it supports that your water rates are, are you know, we're maintaining the operations, uh, but you may want to watch that going forward to make sure the expenses don't, don't need to exceed your revenues. On page seven, we have a similar chart for your sewer operations. Um, and this is one of the first years uh, lately where your revenues have exceeded the expenditures. But again, going back to that transfer, it's really because of that transfer. Without that transfer, um, it would have been a loss. And that's something uh, we'll discuss a little more going forward. Um, page eight is the, a graph of your general fund fund balance. If you look at 14, it looks really high. That's because the highway fund was rolled into it at that time. 
And so that came out in 15. Uh, so it, there wasn't actually a huge hit to your fund balance during that time. Um, it has steadily declined, but uh, at 2018, 630,000 is still 44% of your annual expenses. So that's a pretty healthy fund balance. Uh, page nine uh, represents the unrestricted net position in the water and sewer funds. Uh, the top is the water, which was also in deficit, came out of deficit in 16 and has kind of leveled off. Um, so, but it, it's still quite low for water fund at 140,000. So that's something to keep an eye on, make sure that the rates can support the operations. Excuse me. Now the sewer fund on the bottom has, has taken some hits due to um, some write off, write-offs of old AR and um, continues to be in deficit. This year the deficit was slightly reduced because of that three hundred plus thousand dollar transfer. However, if if that hadn't been transferred, it would have been reduced by thirty thousand dollars. So, without the, the subsidy from the general fund. It, it would have been in worse position. Uh, page 10 is a summary of what you get in the communications letter and the uh, report at the end of the financial statement. Um, I encourage you to read those. Um, essentially, though, uh, it discusses the audit process, which is a, based on auditor's judgment. You make uh, procedures using uh, risk, what, what looks riskier we do more work on that. Um, we did not have any significant deficiencies. We had three material weaknesses um, that have been repeat deficiencies over the past several audits. Um, there were a significant number of audit adjustments. Uh, various funds were over budget um, with uh, material variance for uh, the major street fund. And then of course the sewer fund deficit. Um, going forward, now that the audits have been caught up, I, I don't anticipate the audit adjustments or budget overage to continue to be an issue, but that net position finding uh, is going to probably stick around for a while. And then we have a few comments. Um, there's negative cash balance in the sewer fund, which is directly related to the net position deficit. Um, municipal qualifying statements are required to be filed annually and haven't been filed for the past several years. Uh, I believe Sandy has filed those and caught those up now though. Um, the old audits were not completed timely, so we still had a comment on that, and now we're caught up. So that's great news. Everybody should be happy about that. Um, and then uh, we recommend that the board um, develops a conflict of interest disclosure, where annually every council member is disclosing what conflicts they may have and then refrain on voting for any of those types of issues that you might have when when there are projects or other other things that come up. We also identified several unallowable expenditures. Um, they were all immaterial, but we suggest uh, reviewing the expenses to, to make sure that they're allowable for the village to make. Thank you. That's my summary. Any questions for me? Can you give us an example of an unlawful expense? Sure. So sales tax was paid on some items, um, and uh, there was a plaque purchased, like an, uh, an award. So you can't do that. Okay. Thanks. You can't, can't purchase a plaque? You, you can't. Um, not my rules, I agree, it's, yeah, <laughs> I, I really don't. Like, is it even if the uh, council voted? I mean, like, there's no advantage of us that government can act? You can't, yeah, you can't purchase awards for employees, basically the same as if you were to supply, because it's considered not a public purpose, is the logic behind it, I suppose. It was a black purchase for the outcome fire chief. Yeah, it's. And the uh, sales tax thing, uh, I think it was uh, mainly related to the Easter egg hunt where we would front the money to the parks and rec and they would go out and buy the stuff while they're paying taxes when they go down to Target and mm -hmm. places like that. So, <clears throat> um, You said, um, 
Uh, you said in 2014 the um, highway fund was rolled into the general fund, correct? Yes. At that time. So 2015 yep. was the first year that it was not? Correct. Um, and then in 2018 the general fund transferred $300,000 to the sewer fund, correct? Yes. Uh, 312 I think it was, but around there. So as of today, we are caught up with the audits. Yes, correct. I don't have a question. I just have more of a general statement. You suggested that we read the management discussion and analysis. Yep. It was left out of the hard copy, but it's in the email. It jumps right from two to four. I will have these reprinted to get you guys new hard copies. What was it? What the, the management discussion and analysis. Section three, it jumps right from two to four. But it's in the email for you guys to review. Do you guys have an electronic copy that has an option to So that, um, yeah, it's in the email. Real quick, like, uh, like page eight, I'm looking at the general fund balance. So I, I understand the, uh, like, obviously, 2014, uh, the heavy fund obviously yep. seems to the bunch and it drops down. But, you know, since then, it has been gradually going down from 1.2 million in 2015 to half of them. It's, you know, 50% decrease, basically. Um, I, I, you might have said it, and I know we're kind of going quickly and whatnot, but uh, why is that not uh, a big concern at this point? Well, if it continues to decline, I think it, it can become a big, a big concern. But currently, if you look at your fund balance as a percentage of your annual expenditures, it's still 44%, which is pretty good. Um, usually, if you see somewhere between 12 and 20, you say that's good. But if it continues to dip, uh, that, that could be a concern. Um, also, if you consider if that transfer was ever made to sewer, you know, you'd be jumping back up higher than uh, oh, yeah. right back to 2016 levels. Yeah. Oh, so actually, yeah. So it actually would have uh, gone up. Yeah, quite a bit. To 900, okay. Yeah, actually. Okay. We try to use our conversation with saying that we try to use like a 25% minimum fund balance. And like I said, right now we're at 40, 44, is what it was 44%, but you know, we want 25 to be the bare Yeah. Yeah. Um, the sewer unrestricted net position, explain to you uh, exactly what that is and why we are still in the negative. Okay, so that represents what's left over of your fund balance, if you will, after you take out what's invested in the capital assets of it. And so <clears throat> one of the main reasons it's gone down lately is the write-off of the mobile home park uh, accounts receivable balance. That's, that's the main reason it's been going down over the past couple of years. Um, otherwise, I, I would say it, it probably has to do with uh, all the debt that's carried, as well as uh, maybe the rates need to be looked at. Um, does that, do any of these numbers include any settlements the village has received this year, this calendar year? Um, it would only include numbers up to March 31 of 18. So not next year's. March 31. That's cut off. Yeah. So, so, so there's something that aren't reflected. They won't reflect until the next audit. Cool. This, um, the letter about management, consultants, consultation with other accountants, you're aware that John Ryan Smith was also doing some work and you did touch base with you and keep in contact with Yep. Him. And it said to your knowledge there was no other. Um, that's what I kind of want to I think that's typically more when when they, if you're disagreeing with the opinion we're providing and you kind of reach out to get a different auditor to see if that can go around, you know, when people are trying to get around a bad opinion, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they did a very, uh, great job and I would have to 
just look back on the weekend of the September 21st, 22nd, when Michael and his colleague was in here over the weekend, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, and to see them going at it the way they set up in the conference room. <laughs> Be a bean counter to save my soul. That just, I don't know how to do it. But to see them work at it and how they go about it, and the Sandy was in there on that weekend, and I would drop in, and you know, I, I wouldn't even bring them lunch because I didn't want to distract them. <laughs> but they were here, and they were diligent, and they worked hard at it. And I, I just got to give a personal thank you to you. Oh, and, well, um, I'm just really glad we're caught up. <laughs> Chrissy. 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 Yeah. They, they, yeah. And to drive down from Saginaw? Okay. <laughs> Have that. I'll keep my day job. <laughs> and quick question. Yeah. Do you have any kind of an input on a municipality's responsibilities on amending budgets throughout the year? Should it be done on a monthly basis, quarterly basis? Did you see a problem with those? not amending the budget? I think a lot of it was in regard to accruals that are posted after the end of the year and partly because of the fact that the audits were so far behind. So I think going forward it's going to be easier. You're going to have more reliable data more consistently mm -hmm. now that things are caught up. But typically I see places, I see some places that do budget amendments monthly, some that do it quarterly and I have I have some that only do it annually, which I don't think is a good idea. I think it should be done really as needed, but I would say quarterly at a minimum. Questions? Come on, guys. <laughs> Make this trip down. Okay, I guess I can come up with a question. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, uh, on page three, where we say to stay revenue sharing, I thought the um, I thought we weren't receiving the revenue sharing because of being so far behind. So us. you still get a portion of it. They they only withhold a certain portion of it, and I think through March 31, that figure was somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars that had been withheld. And I know Sandy is working with the state right now to get that money returned. So, so we'll have an additional three hundred thousand. Correct. Yeah. Plus perhaps a different. Nice. Don't spend it yet, guys. Don't spend it. Let's get it in here. Let's put it in the right numbers. <laughs> so the next year's audit will have all those factors included in there, and we'll have a very accurate picture of the financial. Yeah, I mean this this is accurate. I mean as of three thirty one. Yeah. But but yeah, going forward, I think we had discussed potentially doing audits early June. I think May. May. Okay. And so, really, the turnaround will be much, much quicker. Yeah. I mean, accurate is that we have some pretty significant changes that aren't reflected in there. Oh, yeah, right, right. But um, I think Sandy could probably run some reports that would show it with those figures. Okay. You know? <clears throat> Public safety, um, is that uh, anything in, what in addition to the Sheriff's Department and Fire Department, anything else? I think that's going to be it, but I don't have the detail in front of me, but that, that should be primarily what it is. Yeah. I think that's just the sheriff. I just yeah. 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 Is that just the sheriff's? Yeah, it's the sheriff. That's the sheriff's, sheriff's, sheriff's sheriff. Come out. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the fire department doesn't come out of general fund. No, so it is just the sheriff. Uh, that looks like it was about the sheriff's. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I remember in the summary you said there were three, I forgot what you called them, but things to keep an eye on. Um, what were they again? <laughs> um, I guess I'm not sure. I, 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 you had a term for it, I forgot what it was. That was a you know, class wasn't it? Oh, are you, are you talking about like uh, things of concern or interest or what? what yep, so, so I guess that would be, are you referring to the findings or? Uh, Audit adjustments, expenditures, and excessive appropriations, deficit fund deficit. Material weakness. Yeah, material weakness. Yeah. yeah. We're working yeah. on audit what? Uh, audit adjustments, uh, expenditures, and excessive appropriations, and then uh, the deficit fund balance in the sewer fund. 
What are some of the examples of where expenditures over the appropriation? I, I don't know the specifics of the expenditures, like which ones actually were over, but um, the largest one that caused the material weakness was major streets was over, uh, I want to say $30,000 or something. In the case of uh, the unallowable expenditures, so, uh, and maybe, you know, I don't know if this is the, the best example to use, but, you know, going off of uh, President Dilbert's example where Parks and Rec, we have the, the Easter egg hunt, they go out and they go to Target and they buy a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. What are we supposed to, like, how is that supposed to then be actually handled then if we're not allowed to reimburse the department for sales tax? What are we going with that? So we have to either shop on a credit card or something so we can use our tax. A lot of times, you, if you go back to the store, you're able to not do like a return, but they're, you're able to prove out that you shouldn't have been charged sales tax yeah, and they'll reimburse it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, we got to figure that out. And, and is this only specifically when it comes to like the general fund? Is, yeah, In, any fund. Any fund. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so like if we wanted to buy a plaque for a fire chief or something like that. Just yeah, has to be like donation based. Right. If you get a donate, if you get a private donation, that's acceptable. Right. But uh, they say it's not a public purpose. That's a, like uh, it'd be the same if you were to provide meals without it being like a training or available to the public, basically. If there were donations that came in, could they be not for the, not a particular item that is donated, but say? Somebody said, here, I want to donate a thousand bucks. Use it for any awards that you want to use it for from now until the end of time. Mm -hmm. Could that be done and kept in a separate fund that just says donation for these <clears throat> Yep, so you wouldn't even really have to keep it in a separate fund, but, but you would just show restricted fund balance, basically that, that those amounts must be spent on the awards in this case. Yeah, it, it might it might be hard to track, but that's what the account software is for. So, <laughs> not a work, a lot of work. And like I said, I gotta, you know, besides Mike and Chrissy and Sandy, I I, I must shout out at uh, uh, John Ryan Smith, who who, in spite of some people may not agree, but uh, I think John did a heck of a job in helping us and bringing together the information and a lot of people played a part in getting us to this point. Any other questions for Michael? You say June is the next, uh, when's the next time that you'll be working with? Uh, with um, well, we, we haven't scheduled it yet, but Hopefully around then, I hope. Do you know what June is expected to be the next report to council? Or? Um, no, no, that would be when we conduct the audit. So probably a, a month or two after that. That's the next item on the agenda is the Yogan Yo contract. Anything else for me? Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate You're welcome. It. <laughs> well, we have before us a um, contract. Before I move on, uh, Mr. Ryan Smith is here. If anyone has any questions for Mr. Ryan Smith, Pertaining to the audits, his work with the village. I have a question. Um, so now that we are caught up on the um, on the audit, um, moving forward, what do you foresee your your um, business with the village? Do you, do you still see see a, a need to have you on as retainer, or to keep going through, or would it just be when we have the audits that's when we need to have you? I think I can help the village um, continue to improve its books and records, um, achieve the perfect audit, no exceptions, no deficiencies, help improve internal controls, help improve uh, compliance, and, and maintain those uh, 
matters entirely up to the village. Do you think that we're at the point now that, that um, you know, having Sandy um, in, in place that she would be able to handle, you know, the, the daily, the daily, <laughs> stop getting big ass, um, the daily accounting of the village and, and being able to, to give us, you know, I mean, so we, we um, are in good standing with our audits moving forward? Well, she has been maintaining daily accounting for sure. Please remember we were catching up with these audits, so it's just March 18th that's, you know, that's being issued. The last by issue, um, so she's maintaining day to day, has been for a while. Um, so there were things my office did with uh, both the March 17 and March 18 audits, which are the audits that Sandy had most involvement with, that she was not able to complete either because of <coughs> time constraints. She simply didn't have enough time to go for uh, day to day responsibilities or wasn't able to figure it out. So that that's a lot of what we did with the March 17 and March 18 audits. There were a couple of problem areas that that um, we figured out. And there are still a couple of issues that we still have to resolve uh, before the uh, end of the year. One is we have to put in place our deficit reduction plan and uh, follow with the state, which uh, Mr. Ryan Smith is going to work on. Um, and so there, you know, while the audits have been completed and filed, um, there are still ongoing odds in the end that we still must clean up. So it, this doesn't say that everything is totally completed. There are still some things that still got to be cleaned up. These are things that cannot be handled by the village accountant. I guess the good comment that uh, Mrs. Kazer would have to answer that, but I don't think uh, she would have all the necessary time to dedicate uh, just those issues, you know, and still maintain the day to day. Are these issues that were coming up annually? Like every year, do we have to file a deficit reduction thing about plan for the state? Yes. Well, so we're going to be at a deficit for. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So long as it exists. So this is an annual report that has to be filed. So that would be uh, in Sandy's wheelhouse. You'd have to do this report annually. What were the other things that had to be caught up? Can, excuse me, can I just make a comment? Sure. It's, it's more the plan than the actual report. So it's, it's putting a plan together that's achievable. Right. And that's an annual report. And certainly we're not going to keep you on until the sewer deficit is satisfied. That's another, what, five, six years, maybe seven? Certainly. You can't go that long, but right. certainly. But you understand what I'm saying. If this is going to be an annual report, um, certainly, I, again, third time, we've got full confidence in our village accountant to handle this. But what were some of the other issues that had to be caught up? You said that there were some things that had to be caught up. How did Mr. Ryan Smith? Uh, are there any other adjustments? Well, there's all the compliance reports. Uh, there's some amended Act 51 reports that need to be filed. Um, my understanding is that the March 18 uh, Act 51 report is filed. Um, the continuing disclosure requirements with, with the county and, and the bondholders. Mm -hmm. uh, accountability and transparency reports, which is an annual report. Uh, those, those are the primary financial reports. F65, but that's been filed. Sandy has, has taken on more and more, and she's um, <coughs> slowly but surely going to see, you know, after all these reports. But uh, you know, I would certainly hope that we keep Mr. Ryan Smith on board uh, at minimum to the end of the year, because we don't want Sandy to become overwhelmed with all these various things that need to be done, and then we start backsliding. Um, his, you know, his, uh, his knowledge of our system and the practices is, you know, has been invaluable, and so we need to make sure that when, when we do eventually cut ties with the Ryan Smith, that we are on solid ground, not just, you know, stable ground. I mean, you anticipate possibly in November 
date when records would be caught up sufficiently? Be on solid ground? I would say uh, at the end of the year. I would certainly not go before the end of the year. At a rate of how much per month? Uh, I think it was 5000 a month max. Have we exceeded that? I don't think we have. Uh, he has, um, you know, and his responsibility going forward are going to be on an on-call basis. So that if Sandy, um, if Sandy doesn't need them, then he doesn't get caught. Then that's an hourly rate, so you And And he has an hourly rate that's, that's in place. Yeah. But when Sandy needs them, she has to be able to call them, you know, you know to, to get the answer and the information that she needs. And it certainly don't have time to come back to council for approval for that because some things you know, we need to get an answer you know, within the next 24 hours. I think we've, as a council, and I'm going to be bold enough to speak for most of it, some of us, um, we take our fiduciary responsibility very seriously. And I understand the job that you've done, the yeoman's work that you've done in, in catching it was, must have been a financial nightmare. But at some point, we're going to be down there with accountant, I believe, with an auditing firm like you and you. So we'd like to see a definitive answer on when this is going to be over with. At least I would. Because again, I take my responsibility to the taxpayers very seriously. And $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year, that's a chunk of change. So I think maybe a more definitive goal. It's a chunk of change, but it's a chunk of change that we've spent to, to, to get to the point where now the state of Michigan is going to unleash a I'll put up the question. Is, 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 is. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I think the numbers that we've already heard discussed is that the amount of money that we've spent, uh, Mr. Ryan Smith, is not going to outweigh the amount of money we're getting from the state. Right. So we're actually, we've actually spent more on Mr. Ryan Smith than what we're getting back from the state once it's up, once it's. No, that's not a true statement. That's not a true statement. I mean, I mean you can't compile this you know, over a period of years. Okay, um, you know, it's, it's especially compared to what um, disabilities was 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 paying prior to that. You know, cause we're actually saving money right now. But it, it goes back to that old uh, business mentality: you got to spend money to make money. And right now, we're spending money to get caught up over five, six, seven years worth of uh, bad management that unfortunately was landed in our laps. And so we've had to spend money on professionals who know their way around the system, who know how to navigate you know, these processes and to put us in a position where our finances right now, um, even at the height of the, the uh, housing boom in the village back in you know, the 80s, I mean, uh, <coughs> um, early 2000, um, we are solid. We are solid, and that just, it didn't just happen, okay? And for us to now suddenly become, uh, you know, I don't know what the term is, but, you know, become, you know, worried about five grand or 10 grand, I think is, would not be wise, would certainly not be wise. Well, I think to mirror uh, Trustee Bradmore's sentiment, it's, you know, it's really, to me, it's not so much the, the five grand or the 10 grand. It, it's not, to me, it's, it's really not a question of just until the end of the year. It's, it's, can we guarantee that we get to the end of the year and then that's it. We just, we'd like to have the definitive, what is the end date? My understanding all uh, up until this point has always been once we get caught up on our audits, that was the end date. Well, now we're caught up on the audits and now we need a couple the of The audits have been filed. Sure. Okay, but the word caught up doesn't necessarily mean that we're, we're that, that suddenly we can just close the door. There are, there are some, sure. you know, yeah. some filing and some reports and some other things that still need to take place. Sure, and that's why I would feel comfortable. I feel, I, well, I, I guess we'll use the word comfortable. I, I feel moderately comfortable with going through to the end of this year, the next two months. It's just, 
once we get to January, is it isn't that purely we're we're done? We can revisit it. And I mean, look, I've been straightforward all along. And then when I get to January, if I don't meet Mr. Ryan Fisk, Ryan Smith, I'll be the first one to tell you that you know, we don't need Mr. Ryan Smith. Okay? But I will also be the first one to tell you that if we do need them, this is how we need them and this is why we need them. Now, this board will make that decision, and if you want to take a chance and take a step backwards, I don't. I, mean, I can't argue that. I, mean, I, I can only support my position knowing what takes place on a day-to-day -day basis. When I come in this office and I sit with Sandy and I talk with John and I talk with Michael, I know where we've been, where we're at, and what we need to do to get to that happy spot. And I want to get to that happy spot. Yeah, absolutely. Can I recommend that we get a monthly update on the duties that you feel are still not handled? Give an update on, on the progress. I've been asking for that, but it takes months to compile it. No, no, no. All, the, all we need is, well, we still have to do this. Yeah, right now we're caught up with all the, um, you know, the all the audits, audits. So I would say that it, it is more reasonable to get a, a concrete list of what we need to do in our deficit reduction plan, compliance reports, amended Act 51 accountability. And quite frankly, I got to say, I mean, it, it seems a little weird. I, I know. Ryan, Mr. Lansford here, he's, a, he's <coughs> contracted out and we do want to hear from him, but it seems awkward in my mind and a lot, very incomplete to hear from him without hearing from Sandy, our in-house accountant, which we always keep saying, why can't she do it, why can't she do it, why can't she do it? She's right here. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I really would like to hear from her um, now because she's here and we're discussing it, but um, more so on a regular basis and, and kind of keeping us up to date because yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're done with the audits. Um, no, no offense to you, but now I am kind of questioning, okay, do we really need this? Can Sandy do it? And I'd like to hear from her. Um, you know, so I don't know if we can invite her to the podium or yes. what, but either now and or very soon ongoing or whatever. Okay, so Mr. basically, I have learned how to do F65, F51. I can handle those issues. With, of course, support from Mr. Ransmith and Ann Yonel has been helping me out to figure out those, those reportings. When we issue those reports, they generate other, other letters and stuff like that that are we denial, do we have to have extra information and stuff like that. Since we're behind, there's other letters that are generated when we issue those reports. So we are starting now to get um, letters from the state saying that we, we, are, we need a compliance letter this, we need a qualifying statement, we need this, we need that. So I don't know all the reports that I'm going to, to accomplish in the next couple months and what it's going to generate. So that's where we stand right now. I will need somebody to talk to about it when I have to finish and do. Um, I still have to, um, we have the next month, we are losing our clerk and treasurer. We're going to have to be training people. Uh, we have some other issues that's com that coming up we have to take care of. Um, and with the staff that I have in the office, I'm going to have to be dealing with a lot of that stuff. So, um, yes, I can do it, but it's not just the audit issues that are, audit issues that are coming, coming up in the next couple months, too, that we're trying to tell you about. As Chris told you, day to day stuff is happening, and um, the day to day stuff is really, it's getting complicated here in the next couple months. So, with that being said, I will be able to handle most of the stuff, but there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipe that we have to deal with in the next couple months, too. Any questions? What stuff? What stuff? Um, we had a resignation. Um, we are bringing uh, the treasury stuff in-house, so I will be dealing with doing the reporting that, that Rachel has been doing for the 941s and doing the Michigan polling reports and stuff like that. Uh, we will be having to train and uh, get a clerk up to speed. I'm doing minutes and stuff like that. We um, we have to decide what kind of position um, that person that resigned, what position we're going to have to deal with, and what what position could be handling in the next couple months. So these are some of the stuff that has to happen. Also, too, I have to come up with a chart of accounts, which so that we can be compliant with the state. That's changing. What else is happening? Um, Would you say that your newly acquired position as office manager is causing a problem? What do you mean by causing a problem? Well, you're our accountant, but I'm hearing that we have to train people and we have to replace someone. 
and there's a lot of personnel issues that seem to be impacting your function. That's not a true statement. No, that's not true. Well, that's what she kind of, 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 not accounting specific. Don't add to it. Oh, okay. Okay. There's the stuff that, that's, that we're going to have to do in day to day situations to get the office to where it's supposed to be, and there's reporting and stuff like that I have to deal with. So, the office manager position is not the problem. Having a negative impact on what you do? It could, yes. But, <laughs> it's like you ain't your teeth. You're kidding me. <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, so, I think, you know. Um, Maybe what would make everybody feel a little bit more at ease with, with the whole, you know, month to month with Ryan Smith. If, and, and I understand it's a, it's a menial task, it's, it's not fun to do, but is there any way that just on a monthly basis, just when you are calling Mr. Ryan Smith for advice or whatever, that you can just jot down, you know, what the tasks are, or like what the subjects are, just, just something so like on a monthly basis we can just have like, these are the things that, that Mr. Ryan Smith worked on this month. This is sure, he, does, he gives us a summary every month too, what his duties and stuff like that are. They're always on the billing. On the billing, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's not something that we're getting on a monthly, like a summary, like these are the things that we worked on. We can do that. You know, just something, because I think that, at least I, I, I speak for myself, that would make me feel more comfortable. Then we know that what is reasonable. the actual 5,000 that we're spending. That would be reasonable because that we were not paying Mr. Ryan Smith to take time to put this together. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, just to have that accountability, it's, it's, you know, just, I think what a lot of us, you know, if I can speak for, for us on council, I think what, what the biggest issue that we have is it's just, we, we hear that there's the need, but we just don't have the tangible of like, well, what is the need or like, what is it month to month that we're actually working on and where is it? It and this has been a hard question to answer too on top of the fact that all year long I gather information. Right. All year long I'm going to boxes, all year long. So how, how do I, you know, recreate that to show you what exactly what I've been doing, you know? You want to go see my binders up there, you can see what I do, you know, every day. You know, I make sure I get copies of everything I do. You know, it's perfect for all our revenues. Everything I have in the state shared revenue. But everything's happening with that 51, all the reporting and stuff like that. All the websites I have to go to. I made a binder of all the um, logins I have to do and stuff like that, and all the reporting I have to do, you know, so I can keep track of stuff like that. So it's really hard to recreate the wheel and give you that information yeah, to show you what it actually going to do, because like I said, day to day, it's day to day stuff. Yeah, and then, yeah, so I had to recreate the wheel of what all, the, all our big work in that, in that office. Now we're dealing, dealing with record retention and stuff like that. I mean, we took 125 boxes out of the back room the other day of that stuff that then we finally can get, you know, move, move, move out of there now because of audits are done. So, I mean, we're moving forward. And we're getting rid of, you know, there's some, you know, that's another thing I have to do, record retention. To get that stuff out of there, too. So, um, we've got a <coughs> place to do that. We've got a place where we put our records that are permanent. We would write on boxes when we can destroy what is permanent so that we can figure out how we can do rotations on our records. And we're just cleaning up messes that, you know, as we can get to them. So um, it's just not a common. I don't think anybody here is questioning how busy you are because I can remember that one day you were running around like <laughs> yeah. the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, it's not going to What are, from this side of the table, what was looking at as a fourth financial entity with the village? Auditing firm, village accountant, treasurer, and now there's a fourth body. Very few municipalities, and I don't know any, have four different financial entities involved in the municipality's finances. What we're looking for is a time when our village accountant works at magic. When Yo and Yo or whatever the auditing firm says, hey, I need these figures because you're such an excellent employee, you know, those figures aren't even handed to them. We want to see something that runs smoothly. As a council, what we're getting is, well, no, this has to be done, this has to be done, this has to be done, and later on, maybe. Okay. Can you see what I'm saying? We're, no, we're looking for a straight line for an end to this. And when your job will be easier because you've done work for two years, you know where the money 
is in which fund well, are you be able to hand the money to you and you know, Excuse me, a lot of it is the unknown too on top of it too. But know? there's something so, any account deals with. Right. So, so I'm getting more of a handle of it since I've been here, so I know okay. what's going to be coming down the pipe a little bit more, yeah. and I will be able to deal with that and give you more information on that too. So, um, yeah, I don't know any. I don't know any accounting person that come in and say, "Well, today this is going to happen. This is going to happen." We understand there is an unknown in any job, exactly. and you've got a lot of other things going on, and I think you're doing great. But from our point of view on this side of the table. We have a responsibility, and that's why we're asking the questions. I understand. Certainly, I don't come up later on the, uh, on the agenda that will help answer some of uh, Trustee Pridemore's uh, questions. Anyone else have anything for me? I got a question. How is the request that Trustee Meissen just made any different than the one that I made two months ago? Because you wanted it from Mr. Ryan Smith, and we said. I wanted it from anybody. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe was there some more back? back I just wanted to know what went to Mr. Reisman that we could do in house. Well, That's pretty much what you asked for. When she picks up the phone to call Mr. Reisman, why is she calling him? I know you did. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Uh, there's a item B. What's going on with you and you is basically that we ask them to uh, give us a auditing contract to see what we can expect in the next couple of years. And they gave us um, prices for three years and five years. Um, I know we had decided that we talked about doing an RFP right after this audit. I'm recommending that we do at least three years with them. And again, I'm gonna recommend that at least one year until we feel comfortable in getting an RFP with somebody. So they they know our books. Um, you've been detrimental. Oh, no, it's long. Okay. Instrumental. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> instrumental in getting us to this point where we're at. Um, he knows our books. He has gone over and above, like we said, for the weekend stuff like to make sure that we got up to speed and we're um, back to be able to file on, on the last day of the, our expiration date of not being on time. But um, we did it and I'm comfortable with having them here and I'm comfortable and I would like to see, it's getting late to do an RFP yeah. um, for the next fiscal year. It's March 31st, ours. Um, I don't know if we can get on schedule, get an RFP out and get a schedule going for anybody that comes, comes to the door, so. Just to kind of add to that, when Yo and Yo first took over, they had to do months and months and months of getting to know us. Yes. A new person would have to do the same thing. Same thing. Yes. Months and months and, and months. I want to recreate the wheel again. Have they, yeah, have they offered a, a, an amount that's similar to what they've already had? Uh, it should be in your yes. Did you get the? Yeah, I, I just don't have a line. Okay. Basically, is it comparable to what we were? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, they gave us a break if we do five years. They kind of, they gave us they kept the rates I think the same for 2019 as of uh, as of 2018 rate. So they were 175 So it's only going up 500 dollars in increments for the for three years. Um, it is known. Uh, I can call them and ask them questions. And he he's been a big help with that way. I'm in the right direction too. So. Um, I would ask for a three year, but of course it's up to you guys what you'd like to do with this contract. Well, my question is, do we have the idea that these rates are because market rate? Do you know of any other auditing firms and what they charge? I don't. Okay, I don't know. That. That's the concern that I have. Okay. Okay. Well, when we, that's the only way. We had some, but I, I don't recall. We had, you know, you know, some comparables, and uh, yeah. they were, if not the best, or at least they had the best reputation. Well, they were still in place when I got here, so I don't, yeah. I don't recall them. The so, um, so they're, they're in the ball. Oh yeah, I, I think you were the best friends. 
Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. we have, like I said again, we have a responsibility to watch the check box. And I kind of hate to say, yeah, through your contract, but we don't know what else is out there. Factoring in, they know how we work. That would have a big influence on, on the decision. But, you know, again, the bottom line is I'm in the ballpark. Uh, and I would have liked to have seen those figures just to make that decision. But if you're saying they're in the ballpark, I'm saying they're in the ballpark. I'm confident they're in the ballpark. Please. Make a motion to enter the three year contract with UNO for financial auditing services as presented in the agenda packet. Second. The property moved and supported that we accept the contract with UNO for an additional three years of auditing service. Any questions on the motion? I have one. You know, the concern I have with this is um, going back to the tapes over the last three years over this whole financial situation that we're in. I don't have the exact number offhand because I didn't know this was going to get brought up like that, but uh, no less than I think it was about six or seven occasions, the O&O was to blame for a lot of the time to, to do these audits. I'm sorry, say that again? I can't see you. Sorry. <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a half a dozen occasions, the O&O was blamed for a lot of the time that took to do these audits. Well, you can't really blame them yeah. when it took us time to get to him. He had moved on to his next task. Yeah. So we were delayed in getting the information to him. He's not going to sit around twiddle his thumbs waiting for us. He's going to move on to his next client. And then he's in the middle of that. We then have to fit in. So they had a block of time and we missed it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but exactly. exactly. On private mm -hmm. examples, right? On private examples, two of us working this last weekend because he did not have anything uh, available to us until January. <laughs> that's, that's, as, that's as soon as he could get us in. And you know, because they're on recent, most municipalities, their um, fiscal year ends June 30th. So this is the busiest time ever, you know? And he accommodated us to make sure that we got ourselves in on time and reported. Does that answer your question? It brings up another concern. <laughs> <laughs> they have time for us, but. No, but if we hire them tonight, she can schedule her May, June right. time frame. Right. Right. Book till January. Right. 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 Yeah, right. that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Roll, please. Trust me. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's back it up. Okay. Because I didn't call a motion today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was made in support. Okay, the proper move and support that we enter into this three year contract. Okay. Questions on the motion? Mr. Pocone had a question. Roll, please. Trust me? Yes. Trust me? Yes. Trustee Yes. Trustee Mayason? Yes. Trustee Kramer? Yes. And President Dover? Yes. Thank you. Don't go over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see. Did we get the tax refund over here? Yeah, we will that down right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The printed copies that we have are in the previous order. So yeah. Yeah. we're kind of, we're kind of. I sent a. Yeah. <coughs> 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 this is all the same. Uh, so the, the, the printed copies that are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you just read off what the full item is for us. Please. Yeah, we just, I think Yo-Yo originally was like D and E or something. D and E went above. Okay, so D and E just moved to above, so now we're starting. Now we're on A. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we have two contracts that were in your packet. Um, they both went before um, the Ways and Means Committee, and if someone would, from the Ways and Means would want to talk on the contract for Ms. Cazo and our DPW superintendent. I went in and bothered Sandy. We went through the contracts. There were a couple of omissions in the original contracts. Uh, management rights, it was mostly just housekeeping. Ways and Means did uh, uh, concur that the full board, recommend that the full board approve 
a 3% rate per year. Um, that's in keeping with municipal contracts all over, factors in inflation and then employee uh, reimbursement. Um, they're straightforward contracts, not a lot in them. Um, uh, we also recommended that for each additional year of the contract, Ms. Case will earn an additional vacation day. Right now she only earns two weeks vacation. So through this contract, it would be two weeks and three days. Um, was there? Um, we added some of the things that were not showing up as a pension. And, um, yeah. Pay, um, Healthcare and yeah. pension does not reflect or show the language that it reflects so that her contract is complete. We don't have to pull out you know, different contracts to see. Uh, there, all the uh, benefits are referenced in the contract. What the team is? Yes. But Ways and Means, um, I believe, did agree, uh, did want to make a motion that council approve these contracts as written. Did everyone get a chance to review them? And uh, Professor Piccoli, I know that you're involved in labor negotiations. Did you have any uh, input on this? I did, that's why we added uh, the references to the CDA. <laughs> right, but what were there other things that you wanted to mention? I don't recall off the top of my head. Okay, that's yeah. okay. okay. I make a motion that we approve the contract for village accountant Sandra Cato as presented. Support. It's been properly moved and supported that we approve the contract for Sandra Kazel. Yeah, her. <laughs> as presented. Question. Question on the motion. Um, okay, so particular to the uh, the accountant slash office manager um, position, Sandra Cazel. Um, I, I know I know it's basically in line following what the what prior uh, contract was with her, but in particular to the salary, and I hate discussing this with her here. <laughs> but um, but in all honesty, have we compared that number? What have we compared that number to um, to kind of get apples to apples of what other um, accountants slash office manager uh, get paid for their you know, the same type of duties that, that she's taking. There's been some comparable done uh, by me personally, and I've had a conversation with Sandra. Um, I also went on the Michigan Municipal League website, and whenever we talk about contracts, I do comparables on there, and you can go on there, and you can see municipalities our size with our financial bottom line, um, you know, what their different personnel, um, what the different personnel are earning. So that's the other website that was available. Thanks, you know, we've had a discussion and you know we I I can appreciate where you're going. <laughs> but uh, we're not there yet. You know, but we we're we're uh, working in that direction to make sure that she's properly compensated. I just want to throw it out there, just no motion made or anything, but um, you know, as as she said she's learning Act learned Act fifty one something else. I, down, but she's taking on a lot of stuff. Um, and if she takes on more, she will be properly compensated. Hope we don't lose her. I think she's pretty. Uh, she's not going anywhere. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I already talked with Sam because the yeah, office manager duties were added yeah, to the contract. There's a possibility of later on, once we get our financial ducks in a row, a wage reopener. Yeah. So that's. Uh, yeah. Because certainly I don't think we should be throwing any additional duties to any employee to say, here, but you get the same money. Right. So. Uh, any other questions? That's more of a statement than a, than a question, but just I think uh, I think Sandy is, is doing an outstanding job, and uh, you know I don't think we could thank her enough uh, with everything that she's doing. I mean, every time that I come in for a meeting here at the village, whether it's a council meeting, a planning commission meeting, um, she's always here, and uh, I think it's, uh, she does a really good job. Thank you. Roll, please. Trustee Kramer? Yes. Trustee Mason? Yes. Trustee Bowie? Yes. Trustee B? Yes. Trustee Ezer? Yes. President Dover? Yes. I make a motion that we approve the contract for DBW Superintendent Marcus Dover. Support. As presented. Support. It's been 
been properly moved and supported that we approve the contract for the BPW superintendent. Any questions on the motion? Trustee Kramer, can you, um, I, I know you gave uh, an overview in regards to Sandy's contract, but can you give an overview with, uh, with the superintendent? Yeah, you again, it was, was just uh, wording from the old contract, which was pretty, pretty solid wording. We did, we add the management's rights clause. Um, we added in uh, the factors that contributed to the determination of the base pay. Um, there's um, a list of jobs that he does that were was at the table. It basically is just his old contract with the three percent increase, which again is standard in most municipal contracts. Um, what else did we we put in the language for? Management's the rights, benefits. termination, overtime, uh, benefits. benefits. Yeah, it was just bringing all of the con con language contract into one contract. It was just a standard three percent rate. Any other questions? And again, I checked the Michigan Municipal League website for comparables. So, but we did that when we initially formatted his contract three years ago. Any other questions? Roll, please. Trustee Frager? Yes. Trustee Myerson? Yes. Trustee Profoli? Yes. Trustee B? Yes. Trustee Hazia? Yes. President Lever. Good thing. Sandy, thank you for giving this contract. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your support. Oh, no. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk from there. It's actually fun over payments. I think that's where we're at now in our mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how Coral Library does this every year. Okay. We have set up an internal control to have our tax clerk inform the treasurer, the president, and the council to be aware of what uh, um, tax refunds were done for the last um, that thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, basically, what happens is uh, usually what's happened. One of the um, things that happen is I can't even talk now. So um, the mortgage payments for uh, village, tax. village taxes. We received <laughs> duplicate payments on some of our Thank village you. taxes yes. that we had to refund. And the some of the reasons why it happens is because mortgages and the residents pay. Yes. Over. So we have set an internal control to be, to inform you guys what is happening with that. There's two CoreLogic and Loretta that um, there was $2,244.68 for CoreLogic and Loretta was $900.89 that was overpaid taxes. We are re reimbursing them and they are on the um, payment of bills tonight. But we have an internal control that tells us that we have to let, inform you guys that that has happened and we are going to be paying these back to the mortgage company. That isn't anything new, it's just... It's nothing new, it's just something that should have been happening all yeah. along. I make a motion we receive and file the accounts information. Second. That's all. 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 That's it was probably moved and supported that we accept and file the report by the accountant on the uh, tax okay. refund. Um, any questions on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Come on up, Fred. And Jeff, I'm not going to let you off the hook. You want to stand with Sandy? Keep the company, please. 
Jeff really deserves the credit for increasing those funds and, and uh, to the extent that you can continue to support his program uh, with any extra dollars, you really should, I mean, it's, it's Jeff's doing that everyone, whether it's here in New Haven or Richmond or over in Shelby or, um, you know, down in Trenton, those, those, all those funds were increased in part because of Jeff's lobbying. So uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of that. Yes. And the fund that we're giving back to uh, Richmond Lennox, you know, they help support the, the small buses that you see, and trust me, I see them. I, I, I see them. They run to this community, and our residents utilize them. So, so for the uh, knowledge of the board, because I think it's important that you know what you're spending your money on, this was obvious by your earlier discussion. Uh, for those of you that have not met before real formally, my name's Jeff White, and I work for Richmond Lennox Township, and I have two hats that I wear. One is to operate the emergency medical service here uh, in the village of New Haven and the other is to operate the small buses that you see, the small buses that say smart on them. Uh, but if you look closely, also have our logo on them. Uh, and, and most of what they're used for is to get our residents to um, medical appointments, uh, dialysis, oncology, to work is a big place to take people. The grocery store is another big place that folks go. Last year, in the village of New Haven alone, this just stuns me, just given the size of the, the, the population, we provided 4,300 rides uh, here in the village alone. You are the, uh, that, now that might be, uh, you know, one user using the bus more than one time. So a ride's a ride, and so it might be one person. Yes, I think they have to cut a couple of the numbers, and that's the space gap number comes up. But 4,300 rides um, last year uh, here alone. Uh, the frightening part of, uh, of that is a month ago, I thought maybe I'd just come before your board tonight um, and, uh, and maybe talk at the public hearing and tell you when we plan to close the shop as far as that small bus service goes. Not, not, not the EMS, but as far as the small bus, because as many of you are aware from uh, following the local media, uh, the smart village passed, but only by about 37 votes. Now I will tell you, um, we ended up um, we ended up doing well with the millage here in in the village and in Lennox Township, but in the north of Macomb County, it was not generally well supported. And, and frankly, um, we all of us that are that are concerned about this need to have a real serious conversation with our residents and find out what we can do more and differently to make sure that we don't end up in this position in another three years. Uh, because, like I say, frankly, I don't know what we would have. We had there was no solution uh, for your riders. There was some talk about uh, Uber and Lyft and and different things. Um, you know, that might be pro able to provide some service, but I, I've never, I've not yet seen an Uber with a wheelchair lift on the side of it to get somebody in. Um, so, so I share all that to say uh, we have some work to do. 
um, and making certain that the public recognizes the importance of, of the service. And, and I think in New Haven, uh, you do recognize that importance. We've appreciated your support uh, and continue to appreciate your support over the next few years, but, but, but we have some work to do in our other communities to make certain they also understand that, that SMART does serve this area um, and, and really it serves our most vulnerable population. I don't know if you crunched the numbers on I me. Mean, you say there was over 4,300 rides last year. Yes. Um, that's just for the village of New Haven? That's just for the village of New Haven. Yeah, there's an additional, um, and, the, uh, and, and we do split this out uh, with, uh, with um, your neighboring communities in Lenox Township uh, by comparison. Uh, there were 1,132 rides. So just to give you an idea of a neighboring community. So you had 4,000, actually, it was 4,305. And um, just out of curiosity, do you guys, um, I don't know if you crunch the numbers uh, this far or anything, but comparable to to the population of the communities, are we right on par, more? No, no, there is a there is a higher uh, use here in, in the village than there is in uh, in the neighboring uh, communities. Um, you guys, I think, now are running a population that's very near to the city of Richmond. Uh, when you look at actual numbers, the city of Richmond has about 3,345 rides last year. Uh, by uh, by comparison, uh, and if you go over to you know big townships like Macomb, uh, you know you see really although much bigger township, you only see about six thousand rounds. And and part of that I think has to do with our demographics. We have a lot of senior folks here. We have um, some folks that might not uh, be at an income level that allows them to afford uh, vehicles and the auto insurance and all those things that go with it. And so we get you know we get them to work. We get our seniors to their, their doctor appointments. And, and so I think we just have a, a slightly different demographic here in New Haven that results in a little more uh, use of public transportation. One of the things I'd just like to add is, is that part of what Jeff and I have worked on for a number of years are different grants. And he talks about uh, taking folks to work and stuff. And a number of years ago, um, we were successful in getting what's called a JARC grant, Job Accents Reverse Commute. And, and the, the community credit dollars and municipal credit dollars, we use those as a match to help bring those federal dollars back to the region. So the, the $4,000 is only covering a very small, I mean, you're talking a dollar ride, and it costs more than that to provide that service out there. But we're using some of those other dollars between all the different communities and the JARC grants, and there's been some of those new freedoms and 5310 and that number of different things. So, so it does help us match and bring some of those other dollars back to the region. I was I was very vocal about the um, about the village. Um, I appreciate all the information that you were always sending us about it. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting is a lot of people have the misconception that by voting no on that village, um, that it was um, that it would somehow lessen the uh, the number of buses going up and down like the Gratiot corridor and stuff like that. And just trying to educate people that this was more. You would have cut all of those out. It would have lessened those if you voted no. Well, no right. buses. Well, a lot of people it was, thought it was. An increase is of just a renewal. Correct. They're, they're, where, 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 where I saw a lot of confusion, I had, a, I had a lot of time spent out here in your community as well as uh, the communities that the other communities that we serve. And I was talking to, you know, kind of small grassroots folks, alliance clubs, and the senior groups, and, and so on. And so you could really kind of get inside their head as far as what they were thinking. And unfortunately, there was a lot of confusion. Uh, based on some of the literature that was set out, that this was a new tax and not a not a renewal uh, of, of a past tax. Uh, there, there was a slight increase because of a heavily rollback, and it turned out to be, I think, you know, just uh, fractions of a fraction of a percent. Uh, but but uh, it, it certainly wasn't the RTA, which is a whole other issue. But there were our our taxpayers, our residents, our, our friends. Who believed that this was the you know this was that regional transit authority not smart and that's I, I had uh, you know I'll just tell you one quick story with a little old gentleman who, who's a friend of mine and I know he uses our service and I went and talked to the Lions Club and and at the end of the meeting he wept a bit and he um, was concerned because he had already turned in his absentee ballot and he had voted against the village and he didn't realize uh, until it was too late. Uh, you know, kind of that he had, that he had done that, and uh, and he said he didn't know how he'd give his wife to dialysis if, in fact, um, you know, if in fact the uh, uh, if this failed, and and so he felt awful about it. But there was a lot of confusion, and we, and we had to make certain sure that that wasn't happening. Well, I was I was definitely sweating about the uh, the recount because actually I will admit 
I went and I was in such a rush to, to vote and to make it to the planning commission meeting that I did not look to the right and see that the village was on the right. So all the vocalizing that I was doing about vote for this, vote for this, vote for this, I, I myself did not even vote for it. <laughs> so I was sweating bullets when I saw that recount because I was like, oh my gosh, if this doesn't pass. <laughs> From a historic standpoint, the 1998 Smart Village, which was the first renewal, the first time that there was a, a countywide transportation village transportation was 1995. 1998 was the first renewal. At that time, that was the biggest yes vote for a countywide village ever. Uh, the only thing that has been bigger than that has been the veterans, the kind of wide veterans village that has received the greatest support. So we went from the, the biggest yes vote ever for countywide to the closest race ever. And, and I think part of that is because of the confusion with the RTA, because of the, the misinformation campaign that was out there, and then uh, there were, I was involved in, in the recount, and there were lots of people who did not vote out there. So that contributed. Um, <coughs> Good question. What's the phone number that residents can call up in your end? Oh, great question. Uh, here in New Haven, it is 586-749-7713. But we, we also have a 1-800 uh, number of, like you say, the New Haven folks. Um, we have that for some of our communities that don't uh, dial in the local number. We do have a toll-free number that is 844-666-5652. Um, but uh, like you say here in New York, it's 749 The second one was 8446665652. That is correct. Now again, this is new for three years? This is the, the, the your contract, I'll be back again next year to talk to you about the municipal community credits, because those happen every year. That's the money that SMART uh, returns to you, that you have the ability to do two things with, or return some to us, and use others for purchase of service, which is your charter trips and things that you do. Um, and, uh, and so that has to be renewed every year. The millage itself, the millage vote, was a three-year vote. Actually, four years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Thank you. Four years. 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 This year, uh, SMART required that we pass a resolution to uh, transfer these funds. And so you have to report you the resolution. And it's resolution number 18 00004. And I won't read it because this is too much to read. You don't want to read that? I made a motion to pass resolution 18 004. Authorization to purchase Village of New Haven Transit Services from Richmond Lennox EMS with Smart Municipal Credits and Village of New Haven Credits. Second. Do we have to mention the amount? Uh, the amount in the resolution. Uh, so it's $4,560. $4,560. $4, yes. As stated. Could I hear support for that? The property moved and supported, and we adopt resolution number 18-00004, which also rises us to transfer the amount of $4,560 to the Richmond Linux EMS service. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Crowley? Yes. Trustee Myerson? Yes. Trustee Easia? Yes. Trustee Cranmer? Yes. Trustee Gilbert? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. The uh, item G. Town Center. Uh, we're going to put that off until after to after the election. Um, in talking with the attorney, uh, we want to make sure that when we present this to council for potential action, <coughs> that um, you know, that we have a board that's going to be here to see it through. So I'm going to table item G. No? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Until December? Yes, New Haven Town Center. Item G. 
uh, the Macomb County Sheriff contract. Um, I made mention last month of some things I was uh, checking into and working on, and I don't have an answer. And so I am not prepared to. Um, I am not prepared to recommend uh, any action on the sheriff contract. Uh, our contract is good until the end of the year, and I will definitely. I have a meeting coming up later on this week, and so I will definitely have a recommendation at the November. Isn't it also renewable monthly? Did you mention that? That we can. That we can do month by month. It's an opt-in, though, not an automatic month-to-month. -month. I'm sorry. It's a, it's like an opt-in month-to-month. Yes. -month. It's not yes. just automatic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all the Yeah, we have been informed. Of it, but, mm, yeah. Uh, item H <coughs> on water rates. Uh, our ordinance requires us to take a look at our rates every September, and Mrs. Kazo and I have been looking and. In trying to get the audit done, we haven't had a chance to really uh, come up with a recommendation. We're going to be bouncing some numbers around. Um, we don't know how this is going to turn out. Um, we're looking at what our water generates, what our sewer generates. We're looking at some possibility. One is the water may be healthy enough to lower that rate. But instead of passing that savings on to the resident, that rate, the sewer side may be increased to help cover the deficit. So we're looking at how this can all play out. Um, so we don't have a formal recommendation yet. Um, hopefully we'll have that uh, by next month. Uh, item I <coughs> is the, uh, just for information, we had um, did a, a drain cleaning program with the uh, um, the Macomb County Drain Commissioner's Office, and our cost came in lower than what we expected, and so it's just um, we expected to pay five thousand dollars as our portion of the match, and it came in. Around four thousand dollars. I forget. I have it somewhere in there. Yeah. So it came in a little less than what we had uh, expected. And by the same token, the streetlight replacement. We had. Um, I think the original quote was forty-five hundred. And then when it came out. The quote was four thousand dollars, and when they actually did the work, um, <clears throat> the quote was forty thousand dollars, and we expected a slightly larger <coughs> five thousand dollar rebate. Uh, but in fact, our rebate was over ten thousand dollars. So the actual cost of our street lamp replacement <coughs> was around twenty nine thousand dollars. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of that two and a half year payback, we expect it to be a much quicker payback. Uh, Adam J is something that I've been thinking about and working on. Um, and it's something I think we need to establish that I'm looking to establish a, what I'm gonna call is an economic advisory council and it's a, they really have no authority. Um, I'm looking to appoint one person from planning, one person from council, and three private citizens to get together and talk about their vision. What's the vision for the village? Is it Main Street? Is it Gratiot? How do we attack it? What do we want? What are we seeking? What are we hoping to attract. Um, just a group that I want to put together and let them put their collective brain together and maybe come back to council or come to the planning and say, you know, why don't you guys take a look at this? You know, just get a different set of eyes on 
on the building itself. Okay, like I said, they will have no no power as far as being able to, you know, but just trying to get a, uh, kind of like a think tank together to, uh, you know, just think about, you know, where we're at and where do we want to go and what may be a route to get there that maybe us and the planning commission and the other boards maybe aren't seeing it. Just a different set of eyes at, at what, you know, what we could, you know, could be. So that's just something that I'm just thinking about. We're gonna post it for some volunteers and uh, see if we get some people. And I would hope that we would get people from from all over this community. You know, uh, I think that's the important thing that we need to get them. You know, um, get them all over. Um, the other one is K. Um, we received our settlement check from Bradwood. Um, that's in the bank. I'm sure Sandy hasn't spent it yet. Right? Oh. Oh, she didn't hear that. I know it's about that after you. $15,000. It's $15,000, yes. Yeah. So we, we have received that. Um, the add on <coughs> is an employee uh, resignation. Did you? Send this copy out there, buddy? No, I did not. You okay. I can. I received a uh, letter of resignation today, um, and it's from uh, one of our clerks, our clerks, and it's from Vonda Simpson, and I'll read it. Uh, please accept this letter as my formal resignation from my position as a clerical professional at the Village of New Haven, effective Friday, October 26, 2018. I appreciate the opportunity, and I've enjoyed working with each and every one here in this office, including the committee that I've had the pleasure of working with. Please let me know how I can be of help during the transition period. I wish you and the staff the very best going forward. By the sense of it. So I would ask that council accept this letter of resignation, and I've asked Ms. Kazo to put together a job description and requirements to fill the position. Um, we've talked about someone that that has to have not a accounting degree but some accounting background because there are some things that that we should take a look at. Uh, we're leaving Sandia. Some of the minor dollars and cents thing leaving Sandy up so that she has more time to spend on the more uh, important accounting issues. So we want somebody that has some sort of um, financial background and of course they'll be in charge of accounts payable and some of those <coughs> uh, dollars and cents. Um, because you're absolutely right and this is uh, probably more we don't want to overload Sandy and that's why we want to when we fill this position, we want to make sure we got somebody that can take up some of the slack so we don't overload her. In the past, you've, you've talked about maybe a reorganization of some of the duties in there and the personnel. Um, would this be an opportunity to kind of make a list of all the functions of the office personnel, make assignments as necessary, then decide what you want to give to a new person? That's a possibility. We have a list already, and we know that two employees are pretty much cross-trained. Okay. They can they can pretty much. Would we have to hire you? Would you recommend a full time person to replace? Um, We're having that discussion. You're okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to the gun. You know, okay, I, think she's, I think she's leaving that way. Yeah. All right. But we just received that today. So we have not, you know, yeah. okay. we'll get something down on paper and, and try to figure out what, what would be best for the office. Yeah, yeah. I think some of this goes to if we can lighten some of the minor issues off of Sandy. And she can take on some of the bigger financial questions, which also helps us to get away from Mr. Ryan Smith. So, you know, I can't have her take on all these issues and still carry her full load. So we're looking to sell what we can do this. Cool. A motion that we accept the uh, yes, resignation of uh, uh, Bonnie Simpson. Simpson. Second. 
Uh, would you please mention the effective date of October 26? Yeah, as stated, October uh, 26. Thank you. Second. And probably move and support it that we accept the letter of resignation from Vonda Simpson, effective October 26, 2018. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Can you thank Vonda for his service? I'm sorry. Thank Vonda for his service. Yes, we will. Don't worry. It's a little slack. Sign ordinance. Under the attorney items on the sign ordinance, uh, my office has been working with uh, Mr. I say Schroeder, but now I guess he says Schroeder. Uh, even though he spells it Schroeder, I have been working with him. We are waiting a few more materials from him. We've done what we can do. When we get those, the side ordinance will be completed and presented. And it will be in accord with the new uh, constitutional requirements of the United States Supreme Court. Um, social media policy, I believe it should be in your pack. It's a proposed one. I would suggest you spend some time and look it over. Um, this is still a relatively new area in the world. <laughs> the use of social media by people who hold office or work um, for a governmental entity uh, and perhaps a meeting or two from now, any suggestions or you can send suggestions to my office, whatever you like and we can make it a more formal proposal. Um, we use this, the, the one we have now, uh, we studied several sign ordinances in this area um, I even talked to people at the county about it, I'm sorry, the um, social media policy. And that's, that's pretty much the way most of these are being, being proposed and utilized now. Um, and I think there was one other item, which is the trash ordinance. Uh, that also should be, uh, it's a residential trash ordinance. Um, it's been uh, put together properly uh, to affect rates and the uh, rules and regulations, and it's before you, and I believe it's ready for a vote to, to have it adopted. And that's it for me. I'm not sure. <coughs> sure. Okay, I'm sorry. There is an item that was not added here. Um, it came to, the, to my office's attention um, from a more than one source um, that uh, one of the trustees on this board, who is not present tonight, uh, no longer resides uh, in the village. Uh, the state law on this is clear on the Village Act, which reads, if any elected officer shall cease to be a resident of the village during his or her term of office, the office shall be thereby vacated. Um, it's pretty clear cut. Um, I did some research. Um, the only potential wiggle room, and it's not much, is it really doesn't define resident, but there is a whole body of Michigan law that defines residence. Um, I talked uh, to the trustee, and uh, there's really no exception within you know, Michigan law in which he would be considered a continuing resident. Um, and I assume that's why Mr. Chandler's not here tonight, because this isn't a secret. Uh, it, it came to us, uh, he spoke openly with me, uh, and we went through the series of events that led to this. Uh, I just want to add, I don't think there was any intent here to violate anything on Mr. Chandler's part. Um, he was trying to fill out his term and basically thought that he could do so. Uh, unfortunately, the state law is really hard and fast on this and you don't get to finish it out. Um, and, but I'll answer any questions you have. With the elections a month away, we don't have a responsibility to try and fill the position, do we? No. If you had, if you wanted to refill the position, there's no sense in doing it now because you give. But there's no requirement. There is no requirement. It can remain vacant for a period of time. I actually have a question, not not on uh, that subject, but um, back on the um, garbage or the trash. Do you yes. want us to? Do you want us to talk about that now, or should we? That's no, let's talk about it now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for the for the monthly uh, single family residence, fourteen dollars and ninety two cents per month. That's from waste management, or okay. no? Um, it's the current rate that we charge. Yeah. 
Risk mm -hmm. management is actually higher. We've been uh, absorbing it. We've been absorbing it. For the last few years, we've been absorbing it. Because I think, uh, according to the contract, we should be charging 15 something. We've been absorbing the last two increases. That's right. And is the fund still stable by doing that? Yes. Our fund balance is at $100,000 right now. Um, yes. We thought it was at $200,000, so we're going to look at it here. We have to watch it you know, with all the transactions, stuff like that. It is down to 100 so. But we still can absorb it. That's still a healthy um, fund balance for this kind of thing. The important thing to be like six months in. The important thing was to absorb these increases until this contract expires. And this expires uh, October of 19. And I fully expect that when we send out our RFP for service, that our rates are going to be lower than what we're currently paying. Because I know for a fact that we've probably over the last four years have paid probably four months a month more than what we should have been paying because of how the last contract was handled. Are you looking for a motion on the um, Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Uh, I motion that we accept uh, or that we uh, put an ordinance number three hundred and fifty seven, an amendment to section seven of the existing village of New Haven garbage and rubbish disposal ordinance number one twenty one intended to adjust garbage and rubbish collection rates. Second. And probably move and support it that we adopt the amendment to ordinance number 357. Yeah. That uh, sets our garbage rates. Any questions on the motion? I'm sorry, the new ordinance is number 357, right? Correct. Okay. This is amendment to ordinance 121. Okay. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Madison? Yes. Trustee Capone? Yes. Trustee B? Yes. Trustee Hazia? Yes. Trustee Cragmore? Yes. President Gilbert? Yes. Approval bills. for a total of $306,451 and 78 cents. Second. The property move has supported that we pay the bill in the amount of $306,451 and 78 cents. Any questions on the motion? Was there one large payment in October? No, there's multiple. Oh, okay. Any other questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Madison? Yes. Trustee B? Yes. Trustee Pauli? Yes. Trustee Hazia? Yes. Trustee Brainerd? Yes. President Loder? Yes. Madam Clerk? <coughs> oh, just for counsel, the items we do um, are given by November 1st. This is Woodson. Total village assets were three million six hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy three dollars and thirty two cents. Motion that we accept and file the treasurer report in the amount of three million six hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy three dollars and thirty two cents. Second. The copy moved and supported that we file the treasurer report. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Unfinished business. <clears throat> Water ordinance. Amendment. Excuse me. 
on your back. <laughs> <laughs> we just kept it on your business, business because of the fact that we had just got done the sewer, the trash, and we still have to work on the water ordinance. That's that one's got a lot of stuff that we have to figure out yet and stuff like that. And from Mr. Adams' office, Sean and I have been we're trying to get through that one too. And so hopefully, I'm not sure what the timeline is, but. We, it's really coming down now to a decision whether we've got kind of scrap and start from scratch or whether we can patchwork it, make it understandable, and protect the village from any of these Headley Amendment types of tax on Are there any substantial changes? Yeah. Um, just it, it's language more, thing up mostly. Yeah, you got to go section to section and make sure the language is consistent in each section. So as not to raise this question, when these ordinances were first written, nobody foresaw this argument. So it's 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 kind of painstaking because you gotta compare all the sections that relate to each other to make sure it's completely consistent. Um, you know, hopefully next meeting, I would suggest by the end of the year, for certain, it close maybe. It's big. It's, I, it's pretty big, and one yeah. of the problems we're having is um, it's not problems. It's um, the building portion of it, the tables and stuff like that. So we got to go through those those schedules to make sure that we're, we're um, properly applying them to the um, building progress and stuff like that. So some of that is, is giving us a hard time. Um, the rates are fine, but it's just the wording and stuff like that. We have to get the use of civil infractions stuff in there. We have to get, you know, do we put the rates in or do we, you know, do we put the PR in like we had before or whatever. Um, this, it's just a cleanup of language and stuff like that that we're working on. Plus it has to, um, some of the stuff, goes into like the trash and it also, you know, says stuff in, from the sewer rates, um, or ordinance amendments and stuff like that. So we gotta make sure that all that, that language is, is meeting it's, it's just so painstaking. It's, it's just housekeeping. It's, housekeeping. it's, housekeeping. it's housekeeping. Right, housekeeping. painstaking uh, time yes, consuming it's just housekeeping. housekeeping. Okay. Yep. So that's all I'm gonna just tell you that we're still working on it. We hope to get it to you soon. Didn't we, uh, didn't we just recently amend the water was it the sewer? Sure. Sure. Sewer's done. B, village manager. So um, <clears throat> for the, the village manager, uh, what the committee has decided is uh, with some of the um, items that have been brought forth, uh, we're gonna hold off on moving forward with this until um, after the election. Uh, we feel that it would just be in the best interest of the village that you know, because we have the, the, the election coming up in, a, in another month here, um, it would probably be the best interest to, to let, same with the, um, well, it's the uh, New Haven Town Center. It just seems like it would make sense that we move forward with whoever the village council is going to be after the election. Okay. Um, so we'd like to, to hold off on that until um, December time period to then pick it back up. I don't see. I had a real quick question on the manager thing. Um, are we going to wait until December to have language on an ordinance to approve? We would have to wait 45 days after that. So, so would we, uh, I'm hot, a little past it. It is getting warm in here. Yeah, it is warm in here. No, um, would it be appropriate to review language for an ordinance? Even if we do pass an ordinance, it doesn't mean we have to hire someone. Of course, that's the vote of the council. But um, I think if we are going to move forward with this process, we want to have things ready. So do you think? We have okay. two or three. Um, ordinance suggestions. We've already prepared them. Okay, um, knowing that this was going to occur tonight, I didn't bring them, but I can have some of them sent, emailed to council, and you can start looking them over. Um, like you, you mentioned, I think at the last meeting, we're not reinventing the wheel, yeah. but each ordinance it, it is specific to each community, so you may want some input into what, what if you go ahead with this manager's job that what jobs do you want to convey upon that person and what jobs do you want to retain to the council, the president, the clerk, the treasurer, okay? So that would be open to some discussion as to how much authority you want to give, how much authority you want to retain. But we did not ignore it. We put together two or three of them. I was told that this was going to be moved. I did not present to them. But we have them and we'll be happy to send them out. Do the candidates know that 
the timetable is pushed back. Mm -hmm. I um, I actually sent a, an email out to the um, the person who we considered our, our top candidate that we were going to be recommending to move forward with um, for, uh, from the committee standpoint. Um, they actually were uh, very receptive to the to the email and uh, sent actually a pretty good email back with some uh, further discussion points, things to consider uh, in regards to a village manager in general. Um, they actually offered up uh, multiple ordinances. Uh, that they've dealt with uh, in regards to village manager or city manager. Um, so they, um, I also sent them a link to a special uh, meeting so that they were able to, um, you know, just kind of listen in and, uh, you know, understand what, what we're discussing as far as the uh, concerns for the, for the council. There is, if I may, Mr. President, there is, there is one concern. Um, along with the law that says that an office is vacated if you leave the if a board member or trustee no longer resides that person's votes in deciding votes votes four three whatever is null and void if i recall and i don't take as good a notes as i should and i never have in my life but i think that was a four three vote so as you move forward you may have to with a new council revisit that vote Absolutely. Just so everybody's aware, no one's surprised. Absolutely. That's like getting the ordinance in line, but we may not hire someone. But we just just to get the ducks in a row, you know. We should be prepared to address the ordinance. Yeah. Absolutely. And it would be good for any future councils later on if they decide, you know. So it's a, something's in place because finding out 237 was rescinded was kind of a <laughs> kind of a surprise. <laughs> well, but according to the minutes, that was sent out last September. Well, I would definitely would ask that the, the these drafts be um, sent at least to the committee and not the council. We've been we've sent multiple emails asking for updates. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Item C. All right. Uh, website refresh. So, um, Trustee Chandler was originally the one that was spearheading this, and um, you know, as such, he's he's handed it over to me. Um, to, to kind of carry the torch on this moving forward. Um, so I met with um, our account manager from Revise, um, and they gave me uh, some demonstrations of what their current website package looks like. Um, overall, uh, I just my, my personal take on it is, is outstanding, it's excellent, it would be a huge update to the Village website. Um, today I actually had gone through 92 Village websites um, in relation to the village manager um, topic. Uh, and I was actually quite surprised to see that out of the 92 village websites for the state of Michigan, majority of them um, have all been redesigned by Revise and look excellent. Um, so our village website actually stands out as needing updates even more uh, after doing that little exercise today. Um, Revise actually does include as part of their, uh, as part of what we had already signed up for, they do include a, um, a website redesign um, as part of the package. So uh, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if the email, I know I emailed the quote or the service sales agreement to Sandy. I'm not sure if the subsequent forward had the attachment. It did? Okay. Uh, so you all should have the, the attachments, which includes a no cost to the village for them to redesign, update, and just refresh the, 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 the site up to um, today's standards. So uh, my ask is um, from council is that um, I, we, we can have approval to move forward with the redesign of the website. So the two questions. So what's the, the cost? I know it's part of the rolling. Yeah. And number two, have we already given them request, uh, suggestions, requests, uh, et cetera, or is that going to be moving forward? That'll be moving forward. So. Um, they did have some add-ons that they that they did offer. Um, I think would be beneficial, but at this point, I think we should just let's at least start with with the free package. Um, zero cost to the village uh, for for the redesign. If we once we're once we're done with the redesign, if we decide we want to do add-ons or some other stuff, that there are some costs involved. But I think at this point, just to get our website updated, and also in the midst of that process. Um, being able to have some involvement myself with this redesign, um, I think that we might be able to make happen some of the things that we kind of want to see anyway that maybe Revise would have wanted to do as, you know, I, I think we could take care of it. Um, 
that made it happen. The second attachment in there is that the original sales agreement. Yeah, the the, the uh, second attachment was actually uh, not necessarily the original sales agreement, but it was with the add-ons that they were that they had quoted us. Um, so. The, the second attachment has a add-on for job application, uh, and that would actually allow the, the village to, to post the jobs um, and forms to the village website uh, that people could actually fill out. And then um, the only thing that it doesn't have, which I was kind of thinking a little bit outside of the box on that one, um, instead of just being job applications, I thought maybe it could be like uh, an online form for requesting permits and stuff like that. Um, just to kind of bring us into the 21st century with that. But it doesn't have the payment option. It would have like a link to a payment or it could be a form they could fill out, they could print it and they could bring it to the building department. Can I make a comment? Sure. We have the capability, but we don't have the module for the building department and BSNA. Oh. If we upgrade, we can make payments, we can do all permits and inspectors and um, inspectors and the um, People can pay. Contractors can go up there and sure. get their permits and stuff like that. So we have that opportunity with BSNA. I don't know what the cost is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it'd be something like what our utility building is up there right now. It'd be the same kind of format that they can go up and pull the report um, permits down, and then um, as it then the inspectors can go up and see what they have to do and um, take care of it that way. So we can be more electronic. Um, yeah, we're trying to trying to minimize the paper. Right. right. Right, so we do have the capability or the option from BSNA, from our software, our, our common software to be able to do that also. So it could be in, in the day with that process. Thank you. Um, that's good to know. And, and, and all the more reason why I don't want to move forward with any of these add-ons at this point, just because you know they need to be explored and fleshed out even more. Um, and so I'll still talk about the other ones just since we're on the subject. There was also a public service request system. It was really cool. I think the price is too high for our village though. Um, and I really would want to negotiate that down with Revise. Um, but the public service request system was basically you go to the village website, you um, click on a link and you have what's essentially Google Maps. And you can click a, a thumbtack anywhere on the map of the village and say there's um, road repair, there's a code enforcement issue, um, anything for DPW, anything for the village, and it's just a way that the, that the public through the website can go in and say, hey, we have this issue that needs to be addressed. Um, and then you would have various representatives from the village would be able to log in and actually respond to those, um, either with comments or they can close it out, so on and so forth. Uh, I think it's a really cool package. It was definitely a bells and whistles type of thing, which um, me being an IT guy, I like bells and whistles. Uh, but I hate bells and whistles. <laughs> But I think the price is too high. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy to come out and say there's a, you know, there's a thumbtack in the road. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, said, I still I think the price is too high, but I think it was a cool package. Oh, yeah. Just out of curiosity, what you yeah. each and everybody's input be viewable by the way? Um, depending on how it was set up, it would either be public or private. Um, the next item that they had on there for a, for a, just a one-time fee of the 450, it was new center integration with Facebook and Twitter. To be honest, I mean, it's, it's cool where you would post something to the village website and it would just automatically go out to Facebook. You don't necessarily have a Twitter account, but honestly, I feel that the person that we have in place to handle making announcements and so on and so forth through our village Facebook site. Um, is, is doing a good job as it is. Um, it just seems like that would kind of be overlap and unnecessary. Um, and then last but not least, they have a specific department subsites, and that was 3,500 per. Um, it's, it's uh, or you know what, actually, they have it as a quantity of two, so maybe that's for the two subsites of 3,500. Um, you know, I, I can see maybe the benefit from like the Parks and Rec, I think, just to have a new website that was put together where we could, we could kind of just, keep, we could incorporate it all under the one website, it all would be consistent and, and under the same umbrella. Uh, but I don't think that we really have too many needs for the other departments to really have our own sub-sites when we can just have it, like a page for planning, a page for park and rec or whatever. Um, so it just seemed like that was unnecessary. So all said and done, there's a lot of, go ahead, say. We have a fire department, and I will have to have um, 
I do have compliance reports that I have to get up there that we have to be in plan for after you know, state share revenue reports and stuff like that too. So there could be you know, a couple other departments that we can maybe yeah. utilize that. Just but I think that we would be able to utilize that in paid like pages, not necessarily okay. like an, an umbrella site. Okay. You know, um, the sub sites would be like taking the village website and kind of like duplicating it with all, all sorts of menus and different pages. And I think most of what we would want to do could just be handled under a few pages. You know, maybe a page per topic or something like that. Uh, but we can definitely explore all that, all that when we go through with the redesign as well. Um, so if it's the pleasure of the council to move forward with it, we could, um, for the, just the redesign, zero cost to the village, um, they would then put together, um, once we give them the go ahead, they would put together some um, design Ten drafts. Yeah. And then how long would it take? You know, that's a good question. Um, I believe they said it was going to be a few months, um, but it, I think that once we get on the okay, we probably would have some, we'd have to start setting up the meetings and all that, so I'm not really sure on the time frame. To make a motion that we approve a revision of the village website at zero cost by revised. Second. Been properly moved and supported that we authorize the revision of the village website through revised at no cost to the village. Any question on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. D. Uh, Samantha? Yes, sir. Good evening. Save me for last, huh? <laughs> Uh, just a quick update on Clark Street. Uh, uh, as council know, uh, the road has been accepted, uh, substantially completed in the first week of uh, September. We have a couple of pending items that need to be addressed, but we're waiting on the ATT to come back. And I see they've started. It looks like they're out there for dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they removed the poles, but the pedestals, they're supposed to be dead. <clears throat> uh, they discovered they're active and they're pointing the wrong direction. So they've been having trouble with it. Oops. They thought they were dead? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I met with the representative. She was right there and she said, this is not, not an active pedestal. We should be able to remove right away. Turned out to be, it's, it's very active. <laughs> and they they get a lot of work done before they can uh, move out of there. So we've been on them. We just have to fit into their busy schedule. So that's the major thing that we've been waiting on. Once they're out, we can complete those gaps in the sidewalk and be done with the project. God, I kind of wish the, um, I don't know who it is, if it's residents or the mail lady or whoever, would stay off those shoulders for a while and let them, yeah. let, let them, you know, yeah. Yeah, let them get a little solid. They're yeah. still a little mushy. There are several spots yeah. that they're been driven over. Yeah, you see a lot of some writing. So is it possible? What kind of timeline are we looking? Is it looking like they might not finish their part so that we can actually get sidewalk in place before winter season where we can't pour cement and have it dry? The cement goes longer than asphalt, so we, we do have some time. Um, although, you know, I've been asking for a timeline and EPA and they have not provided that. They don't want to commit, as we know. But we've, we've been on on their case on a daily basis. So right now, I mean, I, I haven't heard anything from residents, but if they ask, you know, why do we still got those cones out there? We don't, we can't 100% guarantee, like, hey, it's looking like it'll be in place before the end of the No, we can't say that, and we'd be foolish to say that. <laughs> it's crazy, I mean, it's taken at and yeah. two months to even return to the job. Yeah. <laughs> We, we had we got them to move real quick on on, on uh, moving the services, but everything else is in such a long time. Um, once I hear a definite date and they're back working, um, I'll, I will notify the president. And you guys. Thanks. Anything else on Park Street? Any questions? All right, new business. Thank you. 
Okay, so for a total enforcement officer. Um, I, I hate to say this um, because I, you know, I've been a uh, total enforcement liaison, it was July last year, was appointed. I take that job. Let me interrupt you for a minute. And, and you help me out here because I want to make sure I don't overstep. Um, the fact that we're going to be talking about this gentleman uh, should he not have been invited to this meeting? Is it is it a more legally safe to have him invited to the meeting? I mean, he's a contract. I think he would be considered a contract employee. Okay, it's, it's it's a bit of a gray area with a contract employee. If he was a direct employee of the public entity. I'd say you absolutely have to have him there. Uh, on the other hand, even with a contract employee, to be on the safe side on a due process, substantive or procedural due process argument, it's better if they're here. It just is a safer, cleaner function. Um, that Can I tell you that, that you're absolutely wrong to bring it up? No, you're not wrong. If you want to be on the safest side, person should have the ability if there's going to be either praise or criticism to accept it or reject it. That's the better practice. Uh, let me off, offer to Mr. Van Kirkhoff that while well, we received your letter, and I think we've all have read it, um, would you be opposed to tabling this till next month and we would extend a formal invitation? I guess we could. Um, can I just withhold my motion then and just express how I Yeah. Just first memory. Just I'll keep it I'll keep it uh, <laughs> I'll keep well, I'll try to keep it memory. And don't call them by name. Yeah. 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 Um Okay, so I'll just try to really condense it. Um so we we've had a uh, um so our, our Working with our, code, our current code enforcement officer for the last, uh, well, since March 14, 2017, has been a, a headache, in my personal opinion, let's just say, uh, has been a headache. Uh, uh, saying that it's been a headache is, is an understatement. Um, I, I've tried and tried and tried, phone calls, emails, meeting in person many times, many times, many times. Uh, we've done a ride along, myself and another trustee, actually. Uh, we've, uh, Another trustee also has joined in on emails and stuff. Like we've tried and tried and tried to to <coughs> drive home the message of we need to start formally taking action against X Y Z violators. And it's been my experience uh, and my perception that this uh, uh, this um, code enforcement officer is just way too lenient with people. Gives them the most blatant violators, the longest leashes. Um, and quite honestly, I'll just, I'll just leave it at this. I firmly believe, it's my opinion, that most of the violations that have been remedied during his course of employment or partnership with us has happened in spite of his being code enforcement officer, not because of. And uh, moving forward, perhaps next month, I guess, I would, uh, I'll be coming up with a motion to Take action. Thank you. That was well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't want to expose us to some repercussions. Um, that being said, call from the floor. Call from the table. I'm going to ask Marcus, would you come up and and give us um, maybe share some of the, and submit uh, both of you and share some of the um, frustration with striking. Oh, and, and, I and how we're how companies are trying to gouge this now. Been trying to get uh, some quotes for striking on um, Clark Street. Went to a company and I can say their name. Yeah, please don't. Haven't got a response. Went back again. Haven't got a response, so I got a hint. They just don't want to do it. Got a couple quotes. Quote for the Fountain Park. It's uh, decent, but I think we can do better. How much was it? 
fifteen hundred bucks for our parking. But the quote for Clark Street from Gratiot to the railroad tracks twelve thousand. So you see why? And the original quote. The original quote was for Clark Street. I, I don't know the exact number off yeah. but it wasn't bad. Yeah. It wasn't even included in the conversation about the cross for the So, yes, we had a second quote from a, from, for 9,000, 10,000, 11,000. See, these are quotes that we, in the past, we paid, you know, two grand for Clark Street, or 2,500, and now companies, because they're busy. I mean, let's face it. They're doing a million plus dollar job, so. Yeah. Main Street was done as part of a county contract. Haver Ridge was done as part of a county contract. So we left out on those two. Okay, but trying to get what we need in our little one mile stretch of say Clark Street or the fountain, we're being gouged. Who did the, um, who did Clark Street with the uh, repaving? That was part of their contract. Part, part of it. Well, that was it cheap. Yeah, so was gonna, where we get that because we asked them to do the other half. Yeah, it, yeah. it would be 50% more than what we're looking at. Exactly. So, you know, so, you know, there's been that discussion about paving, I mean, about yeah, striking. striking. And so you can see, you know, it's just, it's difficult. You know, we're a small fish on you know, and these companies are taking on these big MDOT contracts and these big county contracts and they really don't have time for us. Is this something where, because we're asking for striking now, is this something where we say, hey, next year, put us down your schedule? We thought we had last year. Yeah, last year. Yeah, year. Yeah, year. Yeah, year. Yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, got you. No, it didn't happen. It didn't, it didn't make no. a difference. Yeah, we all so tried them last year for this year. Yes. And they're right. <laughs> I'll hang out on the DPW truck yeah. and hold the crush. <laughs> <laughs> I tried that once, it didn't work too well. Year. And the other is to make connections for 
what the 150th committee is trying to put together for the big shindig next year. And we were well advised that we should attend this convention, that someone from the village should attend this convention to make these connections. That's where a lot of bookings are take place and whatnot. So I, uh, uh, Sandy's going to do the registration, and I think they've already reserved a hotel, or they've done some preliminary. I think this is the mid November. It's right after the election, actually. It's, I think it's like November 8th, 8th yeah. or 10th. Yeah, so it's like a three day convention. And so I do intend on sending uh, one, if not two people, to that convention and uh, just take a benefit and bring some activities to the village. Um. And the only thing I have off of that, too, is off the 150. I haven't been able to attend any of the meetings, but one of the suggestions I was going to have is this needs to be updated. We're going on 10 years of being updated. If maybe somehow that it can reflect the, the 150. And if that one portrait can be taken, then. Either way, we you know, it's on the camera at every meeting. You know, what we have to so get updated and maybe incorporate the 150 celebration in with it. I think would be a good idea. Uh, speaking of 150, uh, on the 21st of October, the First Congregational Church is celebrating their 150th year. Um, they're actually older than the village. They're the second oldest, oldest building still standing in the village, with the depot being the oldest. Um, prior to that, the Methodist Church, which did exist on Division Street, was the oldest building in the village. But of course, it has since been torn down. Uh, but the first congregation are celebrating their 150th on the 21st of October this month. They've been around. Oh, wow. Call from the table. Uh, one other item. I, I've, I um, have been working on, uh, and I posted it on social media, on Facebook, and so on. Uh, I've been putting together as just a little pet project a um, community calendar of uh, events, whether it's council, uh, municipality related, whether it's council, commission, all that. Um, I've also compiled events from New Haven Community Schools, their, uh, their fall sports schedule and added it in, uh, Haven Place, uh, basically anywhere and anywhere that I can absorb events and host it to the calendar. Um, it's out there and available, um, but it is a 30-day a trial. Um, I was thinking about just going, going ahead and purchasing the, the, the yearly, just for my own sake, just because I think this is a a beneficial thing to the community, and I think that it's really good to have. Um, so, um, you know, moving forward, um, you know, if you guys have any events or anything that you want added to the calendar, um, not only just the municipality, like I said, if it's anything and anything that has to do with the village of New Haven or inside the village of New Haven, uh, let me know and I can add it to the calendar. Um, and then once we do, if, once I do purchase it, um, we can actually embed the calendar on Facebook. We can embed it on the village website. We can make it readily available pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Talk to the table. The motion is in order. Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.